very excited. Good. How does it feel to be in the F1 kitchen? Bit overwhelming. Bit overwhelming. But, yeah, we're ready for it. Right. Diego, yeah. how are you feeling? Uh, I'm shitting myself, really. <laughs> are you ready to wear the diners? Yes, I am. Yeah? Good. One of you, OK, is going to come out as the f -word's best Italian restaurant. Make sure it's you. Prosecco from Bristol and Salvos from Leeds are our top two Italian contenders. Here's how I found them. The F-Word viewers love Italian food. You nominated hundreds of Italian restaurants, but we could only choose two to compete in the F-Word kitchen. Determined to find the very best, we went to visit your culinary heroes, serving food just like Mama used to make. The search took us all over Britain. From Nottingham to Twickenham, Leicester to Leeds, Coventry to Clapham. Your fingers are so delicate. Huh? Yeah. It's like you're playing the piano. We discovered fantastic food, and in some cases, an exceptional level of service. There's an ad for a handyman in the ladies' loo. <laughs> I'm blocking out his number in case it's not what it seems. After months of whittling down hundreds of nominations, we finally found two outstanding contenders. Salvos and Lees shone out. How are you? I'm very good, thank you very much. Welcome, good. Welcome to Salvo's. Like many of the best local restaurants, Salvo's is all about family. John and Jip are brothers. Their father, Salvo, started the restaurant in 1976, and 15 years ago, they inherited the business. Really, the restaurant's about feeling welcome, feeling that urge to lean back in your seat, to perhaps kick your shoes off, feeling that you've arrived home, and that's what we're about, showing our passion for southern Italian food and southern Italian hospitality. Mm, delicious. Every mouth I'm tasting, I'm trying to find something negative, something wrong with it. That'd give a lot of Italian chefs a run for the money in London. Trust me. If we actually got through, it would be fabulous. I'd be really proud. They're clearly passionate. Family run, which is nice. Authentic, simple Italian cuisine, done with a great delivery of flavour. So I've made my decision. Beautiful picture there. Who is that? That's uh, Mum and Dad uh -huh. in Salerno on the Lombomare. I think your parents are going to be incredibly proud. She's through to the next round. Come yeah. on. <laughs> well done, guys. Yeah. I'm just so proud. I just wish my dad was here to share this moment with us because he would have been it's just so chuffed to be. So Salvos from Leeds will be cooking in the F-word kitchen tonight, and I found the perfect restaurant to take them on. Prosecco is a tiny place in Bristol, but it's already getting a big reputation. It was opened three years ago by Venetian chef Diego de Rey, and is hugely popular with the locals. Diego, how are Hello. you? <laughs> the real are you man. well? Yeah, very well, thank so you. So this is where you're very hiding good. down here? Yeah, this is my bunker, huh? you see. This is my... Um, my kingdom. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> OK, now, you want it, now you get it. <laughs> While Diego works his magic in the kitchen, his wife Heidi holds down three jobs. She's a teacher by day, charms the front of house by night, and also is a hands-on mum. I think I married Wonder Woman, honestly, because I don't know how she does it. She's absolutely incredible. First up for me, ravioli in a saffron sauce. He personally makes these raviolis himself? Yes. Mm. I'm keen to try Diego's risotto, a staple on every Italian menu but a very hard dish to get just right. Not easy cooking out of a kitchen that small. Yeah, it is. It's always a challenge. Yeah. It? Sadly, the, the saffron sauce was very strong. I went out of my way just to do something special, and yeah. pro probably I cooked it up <laughs> yeah. with the sauce. Yeah. The awkward thing for me uh, right now is that this is a, a, a very difficult category. Mm -hmm. And sadly, there's only two restaurants that are going through to cook at the F-Word restaurant for 50 diners. OK. And you're one of them. Congratulations. Really? Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Why? You. That was one of the best risottos I've ever tasted. <laughs> really? Oh, great. Um, <laughs> absolutely delicious. I mean, uh, I mean, seriously delicious. Thank you. Now, you've got a real test for 50 diners. OK. And I've got every confidence in you that you can pull it off. OK. Yeah? That's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Diego, too good looking to be a chef. And, uh, yeah, thank God I'm not having lunch with my wife today. She'd go mad for him. You really deserve it. That's good. The whole idea of searching the country for these unsung heroes, this is why. That's spot-on, accurate, 
passionate Italian cooking. So I found my top two Italian restaurants. Will the F-word diners prefer Prosecco's elegance? Or Salvo's rustic charm? We're about to find out. We're going to London. Hey, we're going to London, eh? Yes. <laughs> now, Salvo. Yes. Shake hands with Prosecco. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, May the, the best, best brigade yeah. win. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Yes. That's the end of being matey. Now, we'll fight like a proper kitchen for that last dessert. Leaves that hot plate. Don't <clears> let me down. More importantly, don't let yourselves down or your restaurants down. Good luck. Right, enough chat. It's time for the starter. We're back in London at the F Word restaurants. Tonight, we're going Italian. From nearly 700 nominations, we found the F Word's best two local Italian restaurants, Salvo's in Leeds and Prosecco in Bristol. They're going to be serving 25 portions of their own starters. If the F-word diners don't like it, they won't pay. OK, on order, salvos, yes? Two spinach ravioli, two pork. Dessert, two tarts. Yes, chef. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, the, uh... Prosecco, two cup of ravioli, main course, two venison, followed by two tarts. Yes, yes chef. chef. So, they're underway, and every single plate they send out is crucial. Half the diners will be trying salvo starter, another half, Prosecco's. Yeah, I've challenged them to cook ravioli, an Italian classic that's incredibly difficult to get right. While the brigades are preparing their own versions, here's how I do it. Yeah. Fresh pasta, the secret behind a great ravioli. Smooth, silky, and absolutely delicious. Right, the filling, olive oil, butter, garlic, spinach, salt, pepper, nutmeg, drain, chop, ricotta, Lemon zest, toasted pine nuts, parmesan, chill, pasta dough. Through the machine, roll, super thin, cut, on, egg yolk, fold. Push down and squeeze all that air out. Fold, trim. Now, to cook the raviolis, literally one and a half minutes into the boiling water. Sage butter, hot pan, olive oil, butter, Sage, lemon juice. Take the ravioli's out, gently roll it round the sage butter. And look, delicious, delicate pillows. Parmesan, beautiful. Spinach, ricotta and pine nut ravioli with sage butter. Done. Now, hey, Diego, Jeff, yes, chef. having been selected as the best two Italian restaurants in the country, I know you can get every guest out there paying for your raviolis, OK? Make it count, yeah? Ravioli is a simple dish, but it's the one that really tests a chef because any flaws are immediately obvious. Both restaurants are cooking their own recipes. It'll be interesting to see who comes out on top. Salvos and Leeds has been making pasta for 33 years. Their southern Italian food is rustic and charming. Cooking's not a chore. Cooking's a joy. Salvos are keeping it simple with the spinach and ricotta ravioli. They're making a type of pasta called fazoletti. It's hand-cut and folded like a handkerchief. It'll be served with a simple tomato sauce, which they'll be thickening with a knob of cold butter. And, uh, the recipe originated from where? Well, it's a southern recipe, so... Uh, so it's rustic the, and It's charming. rustic. What are you finishing it with? Some fresh plum tomatoes, mm -hmm. sorted in a little bit of oil. Let me stop you. You can work and talk at the same time. I'm not a woman. I can only do one thing at once. <laughs> no, but I'll have a bash. <laughs> you don't sound that Italian, do you? are nice and broad. Yorkshire accent. Well, I am fluent in Italian. <laughs> but would you say to somebody if, the, if they thought that he wasn't Italian? Oh, man, that's <laughs> a fangula kilo by ears, is what I would. Hi. Uh... There we go. Thank you. Bon appetit. Thank you very much. Here's what I'm faced with. I'm faced with a sort of pretty boy ravioli from Milan and a rustic ravioli from Leeds. With a yeah, bit of <laughs> But they're both very impressive. Pretty boy. First of all, I'm from Venice, not Milan. <laughs> Fucking grumpy Italian Italians. <laughs> Jesus. Are you always like this? No, this is nothing. Yes. <laughs> Diego's northern Italian roots means his food is elegant and sophisticated. Might appeal to, you know, to not to everyone, but people love it. So I think we're on something pretty much right. A fiery Venetian is taking more of a risk with his ravioli. Diego is using a delicate filling of crab, garlic and potato. He's using saffron in his sauce. It's an unusual taste, so Diego's got to get it just right. What does it mean to win tonight? Probably, like, winning the Champions League. 
Uh -huh. You know, that's that, no. that, that. I think that would be the feeling, really. Gordon, this brush is not good. The brush. This brush, you see, leaves down this this bits of this okay. bits of plastic. You yep. see, it's meant to be black one, no? What do you mean, black one? Black hair brush. You know, this okay, one. Okay, we'll just keep our eyes open for it. I'm not going to blame the brush. Yeah, Diego. A black brush is not going to make a difference, yeah? Yeah, it is make a difference because when you find, when, when, when one of these hair is going inside, I won't be able to see it, no? Instead of a black brush, you're going to see it because like one, one of your hair there. From seeing the fucking kitchen you cook in in Bristol, <laughs> don't dare start slagging off this kitchen here. Okay, okay. Let's get that right, yeah? <laughs> okay, you're right. For a man you, that cooks out of a fucking cubby hole. You, you, don't, you don't have a kitchen here, you have a palace, Yeah, no, no it is a palace. I, 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 and I, I, I didn't I, expect I, guys like you to start complaining about I a make, fucking make, pastry I brush. make three flat out of this kitchen. Huh? Right. I want this to be the best service of your life. All four of you, yes? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Four out, four in. Get, get four plates up. Four Good. Out. How long, Diego, for the rabbit is? 30 seconds. Are you going to change the sauce? Uh, yeah, just put them straight into the sauce. Okay, brilliant. So you got four more rolling, yes? Yeah, four in. They smell fantastic, guys, yeah? Thank really, you, really, really good. As you can see, there's so much more to Italian cuisine than pizza. Here's one of my all time favourite ingredients. This is Chef Alou on the beautiful island of Sicily, home to one of Italy's most delicious ingredients. It's octopus, and for some bizarre reason, we're actually terrified of eating it. God knows why, because it tastes absolutely amazing, packed full of flavour and incredibly delicious. Beneath these crystal clear waters are hidden some of the best tasting octopus in the world. Enzo. Hello, Gordon. Good to see you. Enzo Oliveri grew up here and is going to show me how to catch them. I'm obsessed with octopus. We've had them in the restaurant for the last 10 years, from a carpaccio to a soup uh, to the most amazing salad. Everybody loves here. Yeah, right. Octopus. When we have uh, at the table the octopus, we go crazy for it. Right. Octopus can be tricky to catch, so to maximise our chances, we're laying pots just off the coast. The more you lay, the luckier you get. So there's no... There's no bait or anything? No, no. no mussels, no, no cockle, nothing? Nothing at all. The octopus use the pots for shelter. I've heard they love shiny objects. Yeah, you're going to put a coin in there. Yeah. So I'm hoping a few quid will increase my chances. Good investment. Good investment. That's another one. It will be all full of octopus. If not, I'm going to dive and get my money back. Fingers crossed. We left our pots to do their work. But later that evening, Enzo decided to show me another method of catching the elusive Sicilian octopus. We should be sleeping right now. Yeah, yeah. we should be, but we are not. Right. We are going fishing. This is the way his father used to catch octopus in the dead of night when they come out to feed. Right, Enzo, so what's the process now? We're going to look on the bottom of the sea, and as soon as we see any movement of the octopus looking for food, yep. then we're going to spear it. What colour are we looking for? The same colour of the rocks. Finally, we found one. But as I moved in for the kill, the boat hit a rock. I lost my footing and the octopus disappeared. I was gutted. I got so close to it, I could almost taste it. My favourite Sicilian octopus recipe would have to wait. Next morning, following rough weather overnight and with more bad weather forecast, I knew I had to get out to my pots fast. There's a lot bigger swell on the water today than yesterday. So here we go. Yeah. Fingers crossed. 15 or 16 octopus. Here's the first spot. Is there anything in there? Shit. Nothing. Nothing. Not even the coin. Not even the coin. Oh, yes, there is. Yeah, the coin is in there. Here's the second pot. Second pot. Ah, shit. It wasn't just the first two that are empty. Oh, come on. Now you understand shit. why they are expensive to buy octopus. We pulled all 35 pots without one octopus to cook with. An absolutely sweet fuck all. They didn't want to be cooked by you. Plan B? Yeah, I think I've got plan B. Enzo's mate had laid some pots a few days earlier, and he swore they'd be brimming with octopus. But before we could reach them, our luck turned from bad to worse. Damn, this is a disaster. We're caught in a huge storm. So we're going to head back to port, wait till the weather drops off. But the storm didn't pass. In fact, the weather got even worse. And it was three days before the clouds cleared and I could resume my octopus hunt. They're saying in town that's one of the worst storms in 40 years. With the sea finally calm, our chances were the best they'd ever been. How long have these pots been out here? They've been here uh, nearly a week. They will be full of uh, octopus. First one? This one? Nothing. Nothing. It's been the story of our lives for the past five days. Enzo, not today. 
That's just the beginning. Ah, yeah, 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 there is one. Yes. Yeah, inside. Finally. Inside. Finally. Here is the doctor. Jesus. Finally. Oh, my God. Jesus. Wow. We'd caught it the traditional way, so I was determined to kill it the traditional way, too. Now, how do you kill them? Yeah, you bite this head. You what? You're going to bite this head to kill it. There. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Ah. Oh, ah, that, that's good. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we finally got one. Yeah. Jesus. Bravo. Oh, very oh, good. Okay. Jesus. Nice <laughs> one. Bravo. Finally, luck was on our side. Thank God for that. We pulled in another two, including a feisty two-pounder. Oh, that's nice. Wow, wow. Getting my hands on these little suckers has been a real battle, but I got a mouth-watering Sicilian stew recipe that I knew was going to make it all worthwhile. Five days for that baby. Ready to go. Now, I'm going to quickly blanch it. In she goes. Lovely. Add seasoning and a splash of white wine to the pan and boil for 10 minutes. Time to get the octopus out. Look at that. Beautiful. The base of my octopus stew is fried chilies, onions, and garlic. Octopus, take off the top, slice that down. In, the octopus is going to start absorbing all that wonderful sweet flavour. Mix in tomatoes, olives, capers, anchovies, parsley, fish stock, and a splash of olive oil. Simmer 35 to 40 minutes. I'm serving my stew to Enzo's Sicilian family. Hello, Gordon. A proper Sicilian family, yeah, yes? that's right, yes. They're a tough mob, and if they don't like it, I might just wake up with a horse's head in my bed. Here we go. I like it very, very much. It's yeah? very, very good. Fantastic. Nice. Good. good. Tough five days. However, we but made it. It was worth huh? it. It was worth to taste at this delicious... Uh, Grazie uh, mille. Bravo. Excellent. Katie Price is tonight's recipe challenger, so she doesn't get to vote. But I got my team to prepare both starter recipes for her to try. Katie, nice to meet you, darling. Looking great. Are you enjoying your food? Lovely, absolutely lovely. Yep. We're trying to decide which one I prefer, the first or the second. Yep. And um, if you had to pick, which one would you prefer? The crab one. The crab. With the saffron, not too strong? No, lovely. Yeah. Interesting. Good. Um, Favourite Italian? What would it be? Do you have a local in Brighton? Uh, Donatello's. Donatello's. Uh -huh. It's always busy in there. They've got so many different varieties of yep. pasta and... Just different dishes. Is it the pasta, the soups, the tagliatelle, the ravioli? Talking? I like tagliatelle, uh -huh. carbonara with peas, my extra peas, mushrooms, mm -hmm. and more cream. Something you cook at home? Uh, I've never tried it. Really? No. Now, you're here for the rest of the challenge. Are you excited? <laughs> I am actually. Do you think you can beat me? Well, come on, that's a silly question. Did you steal this recipe from Mum? When I was younger, I always used to look forward to Saturday nights watching Murder She Wrote Blind Date with my chicken Kiev sweet corn and chips. Chicken, Kiev, sweet corn and chips. Fantastic. Really good to see you. Can't wait to see you in the kitchen for the challenge. Yeah. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Enjoy your dinner. So, last table, Jim, yeah? Make sure that last table goes out, Chris, like the first table, yeah? Yes, well done. Always, Check always. you've got the parmesan there, ready to go. Yeah. Maybe a few more scrapings. Italian cuisine at its best, yeah? One southern, one northern. Well, I can't yeah. wait to hear the feedback from the customers, yeah? Fuck me, this is going to be a close contest, I tell you. Absolutely fantastic. Really good. Jib, Chris, well done. Adam Diego, well done. I thought the uh, spinach and crotta pasta was lovely. The sauce was really lovely, buttery, but light. I enjoyed it, yeah, I'll be paying for it. It was quite nice. All the ingredients and everything was very nice. Um, I just thought the pasta was a bit undercooked. How were the raviolis? Yes, they're very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. And that was Salvo's nice. uh, yeah, sort of tortellini stroke ravioli. Yeah. Do you kind of think you'd see on Prosecco? Um, no, 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 no. We would, no. Something a little bit more refined? Um, not refined. Diego's would be a cleaner presentation. Yep. Are you going to pay for your starter? I am going to pay for my you starter. Are Glad to hear it. Good to see you. Thanks, yeah. Gordon. See you later. Thanks. Thank you. I thought the, the flavour was fantastic. Overall, it was, a, it was a quite, a, quite a tasty dish. I felt it was slightly under-seasoned. It was lacking some taste in there for me, personally. No, I won't be paying for the starter, no. Did you enjoy the starter? Yes, it was second? fine. It was fine. I think what it did is it, it, it just clarified the difference between northern Italy and southern Italy. Yeah. Southern Italy, it's yeah. all about letting the flavours talk yeah. to themselves. Yeah. Northern Italian, a little bit, uh, yeah. dare I say, a little bit fancy, a little mm -hmm. bit, uh, a little bit richer flavours, yeah. different style, very, different very style. different style. The most important question: Are you going to pay for it? No. No. Wow. 
Are you going to pay for yours? I'm not going to pay for mine. Hold on a minute. You both liked it, but you're not going to pay for it. It's just not of the... I mean, I'm being polite. It's just not of yeah, good enough quality. Honest. Enjoy your main course. Thank good you. to see you. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. So, one wife is paying for the opposition starter, and the other isn't. Right. Couldn't wait to try these and see what they're made of. Pasta's slightly a bit thick there from Salvo's. Really good flavour. Sauce, not too heavy. In terms of flavour, rustic and somewhat charming. Now, Prosecco's, we've got to try that. Pasta, nice and thin. Pasta's cooked perfectly. Sauce, vibrant. It's got that wow factor. The unfortunate thing is inside ravioli, slightly bland. Could do with a touch more seasoning. What a shame. I like both dishes, but some diners have found a lot to criticise. I really don't know what the result will be. OK, JB, please. Right. OK, here we go. Thank you. OK. Let's start off with Salva. The number of customers that are happy to pay for your starter tonight is 19 out of 25. Well done. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. So, um, JB, the six customers that didn't pay for their starter, why? Yeah, uh, main reason the pasta was too thick. Yeah, Did we, you both we, roll the pasta? Uh, I rolled it, so it mea culpa. Perhaps I didn't get one or two lines. Yeah. However, 19 out of 25, well done. Yeah. OK, Prosecco, for your starter. Out of 25 starters, the amount willing to pay for your starter is... 15 out of 25. Oh. Well done. Oh. Hey. Mm. Prosecco, what happened? Um, the, the crab meat was on the season. So, a slightly bland filling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should have put more. Uh, simple. A bit, a bit of salt and pepper would have just made, uh, made it better, OK? Mm -hmm. You still got your signature dish to cook, and you can pull it back for the main. Okay. Okay. Head up. Okay. Salvos, you're in the lead. Yeah. It's but a long, long way to go. Now, think it this way: you've got 50 portions of your main course to go. Yeah. Okay. Pull it back, guys. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, both restaurants are going to be cooking one of their favourite Italian dishes for the F Word diners. First up is Salvos. Check on Jib. One pork alla cento. Table seven. The recipe for Salvo's pork dish, Maiali al Alcieto. It's one of Jip's favourite dishes. Pork is my favourite meat, and it is, in fact, it's the king of meats. First, he cuts three medallions and pounds them into his scallops. Next, he chops fresh mint, crushes a garlic clove and adds white balsamic vinegar. Then stirs in grilled courgettes. I can smell the garlic, it's just releasing its flavour just with the heat of that. And places in a hot oven to soften further. Jip blackens, then peels his peppers. Then coats his scallops in flour and shallow fries. I'm putting the peppers in and the capers. He then adds parsley, garlic, thyme and vinegar. Then some sugar, vital to balance the acidity. Now that the vinegar's done its work, a little bit of white wine, a bit of stock, which I've got here. Jip finishes the sauce with a knob of butter. Table five. Table five coming up with my alley. Pork scallops with sweet and sour peppers. Served. Why did you choose this dish? It's got a lot of uh, southern roots to it. And, huh? uh, are you putting colour on the pork or are you just lightly searing it? Um, no, just putting a, a little colour, a little colour on the pork, but it doesn't want to be too hard. It's, yep. it's a softer scallop. Yeah, good. There you go. Your venison dish. You're using the loin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. cook so quickly. Oh, yeah. 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 Serving that pig? Yeah. Uh, yes. Now, Prosecco are going to have to pull out all the stops for the main course because they're four points behind. But has he got a winning dish in that venison? Check on one venison special. Prosecco's signature dish is a venison fillet with polenta and pancetta. First, Diego sears a venison fillet, then flambés with gin. Diego then roasts it in an oven for six to eight minutes. Next, polenta. In Italian homes, this is traditionally cooked slowly. But in a busy kitchen, Diego uses a quick cook polenta. Just as delicious, but cooked in minutes, not hours. My grandmother would be horrified if I were using something like this. It's like betrayal. Next, Diego fries onions, carrots, and celery. Then adds crushed juniper berries, which complement the gin beautifully. They will give a nice gin kind of edge to your meat. Diego adds a bay leaf and some rosemary. Allora. Then pours on a glass of red wine, letting it reduce before adding venison stock. Finally, he pan-fries pancetta, adds blanched cabbage, 
and crumbles in chestnuts. You have salt, pepper, and then there is a bit of sweetness and funny stuff with the chestnuts. Mm -hmm. Venison fillet with polenta and pancetta. Served. You ready the venison through the oven or not? Or you uh, yeah, 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 I give it a flash in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of gin, juniper flavor, yep. give it to the meat. Good. Why did you choose your venison dish? Why? Because it represents uh, represent something from the mountain. It's something everybody eats in my region. Yes. You happy with that? Yeah. Come on, Jim, talk to me. Yes, yeah, indeed. Well I'm just Good. looking at each one. Uh, four more away now, yes? Yeah. Four more. Well done. Yeah, Step keep them all right, looking so like that, yes? Indeed, chef. Sauce yes. and everything. Put more pancetta if you have. Right, Adam, yeah. I think yeah, you're ready there. So we make it we make it a yeah. triangle, yeah? Good. And you like the plate of runny? Uh, yeah, I like yeah. it. You know, I like it. I like it to wrap up the sauce with it. Yep. Yeah. Service, please. Okay. Uh, Diego, I look yeah. fantastic and it smells delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you for more, please. I have yes. another, another four. Uh, Take your time, okay? Oh. It's not a race. Not a race. No, at it's all. not a race, but it's important to win. Dear. Yep. His mouth is very, very close, okay? Oh, well, you know, no, yeah. I, don't, I don't go close to 19 to 15. What? Four in it? Your wife. Yep. Yeah, Heidi. Yeah, agreed to pay. Yes. For uh, their dish. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Jim's wife. That's the bonus. Didn't agree to pay for your dish. Now, you oh, can I wonder, get it. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jim, yes. did you know that your wife and your brother refused to pay for Diego's starter? Uh, uh, I didn't know that, no. You didn't know that? Diego's wife, yes, paid for yours. She thought yours was delicious. Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> Keep the energy up. Just, yeah, the energy is there. Just, you know, let me use it for cooking, yeah? Not for conversation. <laughs> Just watching your plate. I had the pork, it was really nice and tender, and I really liked the mash with the kind of crispy red peppers. The courgettes were lovely with the mint um, and butter, that was great, um, but the overriding taste was of vinegar, um, and I've elected not to pay for this dish. I wouldn't pay for that, there was a lot of flavours, too many flavours for me, all a little bit mixed up, all a little bit too much. The venison is beautiful, um, and I really, really like the, I think it's chestnuts, and the pancetta is really nice. This blows the pork out of the water, to be honest. It's a beautiful piece of meat. It's very well seasoned and excellently cooked. I'm not going to pay for the venison on the basis that I didn't think it was cooked how it should have been cooked. Right, the pork dish from Salvo's with crushed new potatoes. Mm. Pork's cooked perfectly. Moist, incredibly flavoursome. Nice little sear. Courgettes. They've managed to make a boring courgette into something quite tasty. Mm. That is delicious. However, the sad news is the sauce is just a little bit too acidic, a little bit too strong for the pork. The venison dish, simple presentation. How's the venison cooked? First off, slice it in the middle. Yeah, look at that. Perfectly cooked. Mm. Wow. That is harmony. Absolutely spot on. Damn, it's such a shame that's just a little bit too acidic. Now, time to get the diner's verdict. Uh, right, well done. Seriously well done. How do you feel? Uh, excited. Yeah. Looking forward to the results. That's Look after. probably one of the most intense services mm -hmm. I ever done. All four of you did yeah. exceptionally well. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Yeah, and yeah. both dishes, yeah, phenomenal. Right, let's find out how you did. Uh, JB, please. Yes, yes. <coughs> OK. Salvo. For your main course, those that were happy to pay out of 50, 34 out of 50. Well done. OK. <laughs> the 16 that didn't want to pay, what was the feedback? The main reason is it's too vinegary. 34 out of 50, well done. OK, thank you. Right. Prosecco. <sighs> There's a lot of hang on this one. The amount of customers out of 50 that are happy to pay for your venison. <laughs> 40 out of 50. Congratulations. What <laughs> <laughs> was the feedback on the 10 that didn't want to pay? What was it? Not enough sauce. Not enough sauce? And then very keen on the polenta. I mean, how can you complain about? Hey. Totals. So far, Salvo, your restaurant scores 53 out of 75. Prosecco, your restaurant scores 55 out of 75. Yeah. You're now in front. That is tight. Very, very tight. And it all comes down to dessert. Clear down, get ready for dessert. Well done, guys. Yes, Really well done. Come on, Prosecco. Right, Janet's back, and she's not just rearing one animal. This time, she's rearing a whole mixed grill.
Last year, Janet became a farmer for the first time, rearing two veal calves. Ah, stop gumming me! Now, I'm challenging her to raise all the meat for the series finale in the F-Word restaurant. In total, she'll be raising over 30 animals. It's going to be a huge challenge. First up, I've sent Janet to choose some cattle to provide me with some top-notch beef and dairy. But not just any cattle. I've selected Dexter's. A miniature Irish breed, which, when fully grown, are still only half the size of a normal cow. Penny Hodgson is one of the UK's top Dexter farmers, and she'll be giving Janet help and advice on the breed. It's like a Shetland pony turns into a cow. <laughs> Mike, just find that you fall in love with them. They are tip, Penny. Janet will be taking away two pint-sized milkers. Get off. Both come with calves. The only thing when you're milking short leg Dexters is the fact you have to bend quite it's a way. long way down. <laughs> a good milking cow should have a healthy udder and a placid nature. Ow! Ow! Naughty girl, I'm so sorry. This fucking thing just kicked me in the leg. She is feeding two calves and she might just think that somebody else is sneaking in and trying to get a little bit of milk. That was just a real one-off. She is, I would say, one of the most placid girls in the whole herd here. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> that placid woman just headbutted another animal. <laughs> I like a bit of spirit, so I'm going to choose her. Next, I wanted to pick a couple of male Dexters called Steers for beef. I've asked Janet to choose Dexters with good frames, long backs, and the beginnings of fatty pads on their rumps that will fill out and give superb, dark, richy marbled meat. You're a bit of a Gordon. <laughs> yes, you can Yes, you are Gordon, <laughs> aren't you? How many animals is that all together then? You will have seven little Dexters. Oh. <laughs> That's right. The seven cows are happily loaded up for their journey to the new home. It's the eighth cow I'm worried about. As far as I'm concerned, I didn't sign up to get kicked and, you know, knocked about by them, and I think there's too many of them. But if anyone can keep this unruly bunch in check, Janet can. I'm your new mum. Yeah. <coughs> Look, I'm in charge now, so get over it. Gordon. Good to see you again, my darling. Uh, you look great. Now. It's always good to be nice to me early on, I think. Starts off that way. Yes. Yeah, and then it goes horribly I've wrong. I've always been taught to respect my elders. Really good to see you. The pressure in the kitchen is bigger than ever, yes? Yeah, but you've put me under so much pressure. Did you choose the Dexters because they're so very, very small? Just to wind me up? No, no, they're very small and you're a giant and they're going to know who's boss from day one. Well, they did kick me, it's true. Top-notch meat for the grand final, yes. Look after my little cows, please. I will. And don't I will. scare them. They won't be stressed mm. out. No. Yeah, you look great. Not a grey hair in sight. Amazing. <laughs> Right, now it's time for the recipe challenge. And tonight's challenger is Katie Price, who promises to eat the most delicious horse meat sandwich if she loses. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, get that away. Horse meat. Oh, my God, that's disgusting. Now, what are you cooking tonight? Well, it's always been my favourite dish. Mm -hmm. Chicken Kiev, sweet corn and chips, but I thought I'd do it different. I'm brilliant at mashed potato. But with me, it's not about presentation. It's about slapping it all in and it tasting good. So you chose Chinky F, so I'm going to do my version. Right, while we're talking, I better put my spuds on. And in there, I'm going to put some sugar. I always put sugar in. Don't ask me why, I just think it seems to taste better. A sugar in the mashed potatoes? Yes. I'm feeling more confident already. Good. Uh, so, garlic butter. To be finished, obviously, with crushed garlic, a little bit of fresh parsley and some tarragon, and then a little touch of paprika. Just to give it that little bit of heat. God, I'm not used to these crushed. I normally buy it already chopped. Don't even get anything out of it. You have to squeeze really hard. <laughs> you, can you manage? <laughs> And how important is food in your life, do you think? What does it mean oh, to you? Oh, I love food. I mm -hmm. absolutely love food. Who does all cooking at home? Who is that? Well, I do Predominant. some, and obviously we've got nannies, I'm not uh -huh. going to lie, because I'm very strict that the kids have fresh food. I Good. don't like them having any processed food. And what kind of things would you be cooking on your own at home? What would you, what would you oh, get home? Oh, if it's just me, takeaways. Takeaways? Curry, Thai. Uh-huh. Do you feel energetic after curry? No, but I do like going to bed on a full uh -huh. stomach, because you have the best sleep, even though it's not good for you, is it? Favourite aphrodisiac food, what would it be? I haven't got one. Nothing? In fact, people say the more... S if I'm sober, I'm actually... I shouldn't give these secrets away on the Please. Good show. I'm better well-performed in bed when I haven't had a drink. <laughs> more filth, should more I say, like the kitchen at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> now you're trying to put me off my cooking. <laughs> Is that too much butter? Well, that's... Yeah, I love butter. Anyway. Don't forget, 30% of it will leak out anyway, so the more the merrier. Stupid thing. Should I do that for you? Yeah, um, do it up tight. There you go. Tight, in a tight. double knot. 
Jesus Christ. Huh? <laughs> right, there we are. Is that time? Brilliant, yeah. yeah. Excellent, good. Right. Now, the books have sold millions, yeah? From the biographies to the updates, the follow-ons. Have you actually stopped and thought how much you're worth? I don't. My brother deals with my money. He only gives me pocket money each month. So how much pocket money do you get a month? What is, what's your allowance? Well, my horses cost six and a half grand a month to keep. And what about for yourself in terms of spending? I'm not high maintenance, believe it or not. Katie Price. Okay, Excuse my me. Hair extensions That's like cost. saying I'm a vegetarian. You're not. I swear high I'm maintenance. not. I'm not. Okay, what? my hair every three months costs fifteen thousand pound. That's because I go to LA and it's the flight that costs a lot. <laughs> what do they do? Extensions. That's sixty grand a year. Look at I, the state you know of what? that. If you beat me, I'm going to be gutted. You know that, hey? Seriously. You look. You do it huh? properly. That's a piping bag, so I can oh, go I'm right just slopping it in. down into the center. Okay, you can tell who he's the cook, can't you? That's a proper operation. I've just eh? realised, looking at your hands there, your breasts are bigger than mine. Well, I'm not surprised. Look at this shit I put on them. <laughs> oh, very funny. No, but ch the chicken breasts, even though you panned them. Look how neat. Everyone's going to know whose is whose, they, honestly. Here, honestly, our blind tasters, trust oh, me. Oh, yeah, they're blind, aren't they? They're just called blind tasters because they don't know who's cooking what. True there, flour, egg wash, breadcrumb, into a pan, lightly seared. Lightly coloured and then into the oven. So, truthfully, who's the better cook, Peter or Alex Reed? Who would you say? Completely different. Completely different. Alex is more healthy. Oh. Like complete health freak. Really? So, Alex is a cage fighter. What, what, what was your mum's reaction when you told her? Oh, she said, next time you go for someone, make sure they're a man's man. So, I showed them their YouTube. And, and my she... dad was like, um, bloody hell, yeah, he is. Yeah. My chicken's about to go in the oven. It may look messy, but it's not about how it looks, it's how it tastes. Now, would you like to go on the top or the bottom? Middle. Have you got middle? <laughs> yes. I want the middle. <laughs> well, where are you going? <laughs> now I'm going on top. I like it on top. Look at that already, nice look. Oh, no, no, nice and crispy. Right, now they have to cook for 10 to 12 minutes, then the blind tasters will pick a winner. There can only be one. Excited? Oh, very. Yeah? I'm shaking with excitement. <laughs> right, now time for the results of the recipe challenge. I like the look of those KFs. If you beat me, I'm going to be so gutted. You know that, huh? Right, come back with the right result. Good luck. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Here you go. Excellent. Thank you. Chicken is really tender. Mm. Mm. Just the right amount of garlic. Garlic is lovely. Mm. It's quite dry. For the texture of this one to that one. It's really mm. sweet mashed potato as well. I do oh, prefer the taste of the potato, though. It is a lot more buttery. Right, JB. What was the score? It's a five to nil. Five to nil. If uh, you beat me, five nil. No, I'm serious. If, I'm no, no, if you beat me five nil on this Demo, one, I take Demo, my Demo. career's screwed. But right, come on, five nil to who? Don't do this to me. So the winner is. Yes? It's you. Look, Good. do you know what? Yes! <laughs> yes! Five nil? Yeah. Thank God for that. I saw the sugar and the mashed potatoes going in, and that's when I started to realise I've got it. Uh, yeah. Now, get out of my kitchen, and don't forget this little horse sandwich. Nice, uh, thanks. Uh, Nice to cook with you. Mwah. Yeah, likewise. Mwah. Good see to ya. see you. See you, bye. Take care. Right, now it's time for my dessert. Fig and frangipan tart. Almondy, luxurious and absolutely delicious. First off, the frangipan. Butter, ice and sugar, sift, ground almonds, beet, two eggs, mix, chill, puff pastry, cut discs, Brick. Smooth on frangipan. Egg yolk. Dust with ice and sugar. And now the secret is to pre bake the tart so it gets nice and crispy before you put the figs on it. Bake for four to five minutes. Figs. Slice. Bake. Mascarpone, ice and sugar, lemon zest, mix. And now a nice spoon of lemon mascarpone on top. Fig and frangipan tart with lemon mascarpone. Done. Salvo, let's go four tarts away on table one, please. Diego, four tarts away on table four, please. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. There's only two votes in this one. Come on, make it count. Use a nice warm spoon so it spreads out the frangipan on the bottom, yeah? As soon as that ice and sugar's on there, make sure the pastry goes straight in the oven. Jim, I want these yeah, absolutely daddy. perfect, yes? You yeah, want too much vinegar in your sauce? That's your fault. This I want absolutely perfect. Diego, Jim, keep it going, yes? Yes, yes, yes There's only two votes in this, yeah? 
That's how close it is. Jib, they look beautiful. Yeah. 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 Thank they you, look Jeff. beautiful. Thank Let's you. go. Yeah. Service, please. Five tarts away on table five, yeah? yeah? yeah. Let's go. Nine, nine, okay, nine, nine. nice. They look lovely. Come on, Diego. Keep the pace up. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Chris. Who's going home as a winner? Who's going home as a loser? Come on. Down to the tarts. Uh, Chris, what are you doing? All right, Diego. Service, please. Table one, yes? Let's go. Very nice. Let's go. Right, good. Table one. Prosecco started this course really well, but unfortunately it's gone a little bit pear-shaped. Whereas Salvos are taking it steady, but they seem to have a lot better organisation. This, right now, is too close to call. The tart was really fabulous. It was fresh, the mascarpone was fabulous with the lemon uh, zest, and it was lovely. This is a great dessert, this one here. It's two votes, that's all that's in it. We can pull this back at this stage. The pastry was quite light. The figs were spot on, and the, uh, the mascarpone had a really nice zing to it as well. My dessert's lovely, really nice. The puff pastry is, is perfect, very crisp, so this is beautiful. OK, results. Here we go. Thank you. There's only two votes in this. It's all down to dessert. OK, for a second. The amount of customers that are happy to pay for the dessert is... 16 out of 25 that are happy to pay for the desserts. Well done. <laughs> OK, good. <laughs> Salvo. If you get more than 18 out of 25, then you've won. Good luck to you all. The amount of guests that are happy to pay for your desserts is... It's 20 out of 25. Congratulations. <laughs> Salvo, congratulations. You and your restaurant are the winners, yeah? Really well done. Yes? Yes. You're now on the leaderboard, yes? Yes, indeed. And in nine weeks' time, we're going to find out, yeah, who goes through to the semi final. Well done. It's been an absolute pleasure working with all four of you. Now, do me a favour, get out there and get a large glass of Prosecco. <laughs> Off you go. Thank well you. done. Salvos are number one on the leaderboard, but will their score be high enough to earn them a place in the semi-finals of the f Word's best local restaurant? We don't know what the next round's going to bring, but, you know, we're ready for it, are we, Chris? Yeah, bring it on.